Try spinning it leg side. I'm not bowling. <laughs> okay, address the ball. Check the grip. Knees in. Left arm straight. Shoulder the target. Keep your eye on the ball. Weight on the left foot. Bottom out. And relax. <laughs> Okay, Tim, if you had to sum up the problem with your marriage in one word, what would that word be? Flirting. Flirting? Yes, basically, I'm a terrible flirt. Are you? Well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I I'm just going to ask you to fill in this form, just a few routine questions about your relationship with your wife. Sure. Oh, sorry. I accidentally touched your hand. <laughs> That's all right. These things happen. <laughs> These questions are really difficult. Are they? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I take them home and bring the answers in tomorrow? Um, all right, just this once. Great. Bye. Bye. It's a time like these. I wish I was at home with my wife. Are you married, Captain? Me? Oh, yeah. I'm married. I'm married all right. But not the same way you are. My wife isn't a woman who waits at home by a warm fireplace. That's my wife out there, smashing this boat to smithereens. That's my partner, my lover, my mistress, my whore. When you're at home with your warm brandy and your beautiful wife, I'm with that ferocious temptress, throwing me from side to side as her will takes her. Oh, she can be kind when she wants to be. But if you get her angry, she can pick you up like a stick and break you over her knee. Do you want a cup of tea, love? Yes, please. <laughs> Eyes down on the money. Let's get ready to play. <laughs> click and click, 66. You owe me 23. All the ones, 11 on its own. 1, 6, 4, 28, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's start again. Hey, who wants to sponsor me? What's it for? I'm going to go up Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, wow, that sounds amazing. I'll sponsor you. Me too. That'll give you something. How much are you hoping to raise? Well, hopefully about £3,000, and that'll go towards all flights to and from Africa, provisions and stuff like that. What charity is it in aid of? How do you mean? <laughs> What's the money going towards? Well, I just told you. Flights, provisions, hotels, cable car tickets. Cable car tickets? <laughs> it's the biggest mountain in Africa. I'm not going to walk it. <laughs> Point, Tim, is there a charity involved or not? No, there isn't, no. Well, then you're not having our money! <laughs> Who wants to buy a raffle ticket? No! Oh, come on, guys, I've got to raise the money somehow. All right, run through some of the prizes. Run through some of the what? <laughs> oh, wait, hang on, what if people need to contact us? I knew you'd start panicking, so that's why I bought an answering machine. We're not here at the moment. Please leave your message after the tone. Right, OK. But we're away for two weeks. People will think we're rude for not replying straight away. We're on holiday and won't be back till the 17th of November. Please leave your message after the tone. Right, come on, let's go. But what if a burglar rings? We're on holiday till the 17th of November. Please leave your message after the tone. And our mate, Big Mental Frankie, who's staying here, will pass it on. <laughs> but now people are going to think we're rude for not responding to the messages that Big Mental Frankie passed on. We're away on holiday and we'll be back till the 17th of November. Please leave your message after the tone. And our mate, Big Mental Deaf Frankie, who's staying with us, will pass it on. <laughs> Breaking in. <laughs> We're away on holiday and we'll be back to the 17th of November. Please leave your message after the tone and our mate, big, deaf, mental Frankie, who's staying with us, will pass it on, unless he's taken his dog, who's a big, nasty, vicious bugger, for a walk. But if he's out, in which might... case, just ring back in a few moments, because he's never gone for very long. But the burglars might then. Look, it doesn't matter, we haven't got anything worth nicking. Well, the answer machine's new. Right, we'll take it with us. <laughs> Let's
This stethoscope doesn't work. Sounds all right to me. <laughs> Hello. Yes? Can I have a cafe latte? I don't think so. Why not? They're for the middle classes. <laughs> That's my son taken last year when he was eight. Oh, right. That's him as a tiny baby. <laughs> he definitely looks like you, doesn't he? Yeah, chip off the old block, no hair and all that. Yeah. That's the birth. And let me take photos. That's my wife, eight months pregnant, in the bath. Do you mind me looking at these, Jim? Mind? Why should I mind? That's us at the conception. Conception? I I'm not sure about this. Now, that's me on my own, in bed with a copy of Razzle. I don't want to look at that, thank you. Come on. That's my mum and dad conceiving me. My grandparents having sex in an air raid Jim, shelter. Jim, this is awful. Oh, I know how you feel. Other people's photos aren't nearly so interesting as your own. That's you and your wife in the shower. <laughs> and if you add that onto the fact that this mortgage is 2% lower than the standard APR of other banks, you'll see that with us, you'll be £3,000 a year better off. Mm, it's great. And there's the repayment holiday of up to four weeks a year. That won't cost you a penny of interest. Well, it's just fantastic. It's just what I need. And of course, there's the uh, cashback deal, which is worth £1,000 to you. Uh, it's an excellent deal. I I'm going to take it. Fantastic. Uh -huh. yeah. Just sign at the bottom there. Okay. <laughs> Your home is at risk if you've not covered repayments of the loan secured on your mortgage. You may attract any redemption penalties. Now, you do the thing you might want to consider is our insurance policy, which we're offering at the moment at 30% discount if taken out at the same time as the mortgage. Right. Well, I, I do need insurance. Great. Actually, yeah. Well, there's a special offer at the moment. Anyone who signs up today gets a free weekend in France. You're joking. Nope. That's amazing. OK, I'm going to take it too. Great, yeah. just sign at the bottom there. Right. Tickets are economy singles on a National Express coach without toilets and accommodation is a one-man tent to the council estate in Boulogne. <laughs> are you excited about the move, you and your husband? Uh, I'm, I'm not married. Me neither. No, I'm recently divorced. Wow. Me too. <laughs> hey, maybe we could uh, go out for a drink? Yeah, why not? Great. Okay. What about tonight? Yeah, okay. Okay, well, I'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. <laughs> no guarantee can be made that I won't cut you up into little pieces and bury you under the A34 like all the rest. Sorry. <laughs> here you go, girls. <coughs> to me, the definitive anti-heroine in French literature is Zola's Nana. I disagree. I find there to be far more resonance in Therese Recan's predicament. <laughs> that depends if you're looking at it from the post-revolutionary perspective. <laughs> Actually, I find for me Dumas to be the enfant terrible of the French literati movement. So I slapped him, didn't I? I would have cut him. <laughs> you Dostoevsky man or Solzhenitsyn? I need to go for a wee. You can go over there in the woods. I can't go in there. Of course you can. Folk, series three, episode two, scene four. What have you got for me, uh, Peter? Okay, Nathan walks into the bar, instantly catches sight of an attractive man over at the drinking area. Their eyes meet. Okay. Instantly, there's a nervous anticipation. He walks over <laughs> to where the man is, says, Can I buy you a drink? The man says, I only drink with someone if I know their name. I'm Nathan, says Nathan. Hello, I'm Steve, says the man. Cut to an hour later, back at Nathan's place, semi naked, they fall to the floor <laughs> in a passionate embrace. Oh. Nathan kisses Steve erotically. Sorry, I'll stop you there. Um, have you got a problem? Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you know any gay people? Yeah, my boyfriend. <laughs> well, I don't think you fully grasp what being gay in the new millennium's all about, have you? Right, well, let's see what you've got, shall we? OK. Nathan sees a man at the bar, and without any of these inhibitions, he goes, Yoo-hoo, hello, sailor. <laughs> he runs straight up to man and says, What's your name, ducky? Oh, says the man, my name's Gladys. Do you fancy a creme de month? <laughs> we cut to one hour later. Nathan and Gladys are dancing to Danny LaRue records. <laughs> it walks a woman. It's Nathan's lesbian flatmate, Brian. 
A huge, big, stocky woman with hairy hands and a pipe. Who the bloody hell's this? She shouts. This is Gladys and we're getting married, says Nathan. You can't bloody get married, you're an homosexual. That's bloody illegal. Well, I'm going to protest and then I'm going to buy some shoes. It comes to one hour later. Nathan and Gladys are outside 10 Downing Street protesting, waving their knickers in the air, shouting, one at the bomb, no harm done. We're just the same as the normal people. And then Tony Blair comes out and goes, I've decided to let homos and lesbos get married, but you're not working with kiddies. Hooray, they cheer. That's just what we wanted. And then they all skip off down the road, happy shouting, I'm free, Captain Peacock. Shut that door. What a gay day. Oh, you are awful, but I like you. <laughs> well, what do you think? We'll let you know. <laughs> OK. Bye-bye. Can I help you, sir? And we'd like a room for two nights, please. <laughs> the nominees for the best actor are... I think I'm going to win this. I think you are, too. Dustin Hoffman for Doctor at the Gate, Robert De Niro for Ignition, and Tim Vine for Simon and the Singing Cow. And the winner is... Robert De Niro! The truck ice, was it? Good morning, sweetheart. <laughs> or should I say, Mrs. Vine? Isn't this absolutely beautiful? <laughs> From now on, it's just you and me and the rest of our lives. <laughs> every minute of every day, together. <laughs> Summer, winter, autumn, spring. Come what may, I'll always be with you. Wherever you go, I'll go. <laughs> Every direction you turn, there'll be no escape from my love. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I know people say that you, you change when you get married, but don't worry, darling, I'll never change. Never. <clears throat> <clears throat> sure, we'll face obstacles, but we'll face them as a team. And when we do go through hard times, we'll go through them together. And we'll always be able to look back to this day, this place, <laughs> this perfect moment, together. Don't bite your nails, love. <laughs> Hello, Samaritans. Yes. Yes, of course. Try to calm down. Now, you say you've taken some pills. What sort of pills? Slow down, slow down. What were they? Paracetamol. And how many? Two. <laughs> With a glass of water. You're going to be absolutely fine. You've nothing to worry about whatsoever. At least 25 or 30. And even then you'd be all right. You'd have to wash them down with, say, a litre and a half of vodka, <laughs> followed by another dozen sleeping pills, more vodka, more pills. Not necessarily in that order, no. <laughs> That's quite all right. Glad to be of assistance. <laughs> Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict upon which you are all agreed? We have. How do you find the defendant? Shifty. What do you mean, shifty? We find him shifty and a little bit dodgy. You must say guilty or not guilty. OK, we, the members of the jury, find the defendant guilty-looking. You can't find him guilty-looking. You have to say guilty or not guilty based on the facts. I am basing it on the facts. The fact that he looks guilty. It doesn't matter what he looks like. You have to give your verdict based on whether you think he committed the crime in question. Oh, well, you didn't say that, did you? You said, how do we find him? That's just how we phrase it in court. Well, you shouldn't. If that was Jack the Ripper sat there, we may have found him a pleasant and amiable chap. And we'd have said that, you'd have let him go, and then you'd have had the blood of innocent women all over your hands. Look, sir... What you should say is, do we think the defendant did it? All right, do you think he did it? Ah, well, that's a difficult question. It was well over a hundred years ago. Not Jack the Ripper, this man here. Him? Well, as I say, he looks a little bit dodgy, but I don't think he's a prostitute murderer. No, do you think he's guilty or not guilty of stealing a washing machine? Guilty. He definitely did it. And I'm not basing that on the way he looks. And what are you basing it on? His defence. At last. She looks shifty as well. 
lining up the red for the centre pocket. Lovely. That's uh, beautifully positioned on the green. This is a lovely house, Karen. Thanks. Have you had much work done to it? Yeah, uh, I had some of that one-way glass put in, so I can see out, but they can't see in. It just looks like a mirror to them. Wow, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I only had the upstairs done. <laughs> You want to get with the 21st century? <laughs> 28. Is it brown next? <laughs> Blue, brown, green and yellow. Nice plugs. Oh, there's a way to remember it. Never eat shredded wheat. No, that's the compass. Um, every good boy deserves football. No, that's the musical scales. Mm. That was that song. Uh, snooker, loopy, nuts are we, we snooker. Loopy, punt the reds, then screw back to the yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, and black. <laughs> snooker, loopy, nuts are we, we or snooker, loopy, green ball. Hi. Hello. Are you uh, looking for some company? Not really. I just want sex. <laughs> That's what I meant. Oh. Why did you say, are you looking for some company? It's just what we say, it's a polite way of saying it, because some people get embarrassed. Well, doesn't it get confusing? What if, you know, they only do want company? Well, that's never happened. Well, it might do. What you should say is, are you looking for some company? Get past the embarrassing bit, and then say, because if you are, you've come to the wrong place. I only do sex. Look, mate, what do you want? I've stopped for directions. I thought you wanted sex. I do, it's just a polite way of saying it. OK, let's do it the polite way, shall we? Are you after company whilst looking for directions? Yes, I am. How much? Well, say if I was to point you in the right direction with my hands, that would be 30. If I was to give you oral directions, that would be £60. And if I was to take you all the way to your destination, that would be 80 And how much would it be for sex? Go on, then. <laughs> Something uh, troubling him greatly about this. Difficult to see quite how he's going to make this work. He's going to have a go. Foul. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> Last night I went out with my girlfriend, Claudia Schiffer. 
I took her to the Ritz Hotel, which I own, and who should I bump into but my old mate George W. Bush. And we talked about the old times when I invented the combine harvester and the microchip, all in the same week, and gave Bill Gates his first job. <laughs> What are you doing? The book's much better than the film. <laughs> Hi, aren't we all on the same English course? Oh yeah, how's it going? Not bad, but I sometimes have trouble with grammar, isn't it? Really? Sometimes I'm spot on and other times I don't, aren't they? <laughs> I'm alright with my grandma, my problem is spilling. <laughs> Don't spill to save me a loaf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have to rely on the spill chalk on my computer. <laughs> well, don't worry about it too much. I'm sure you'll be treated with a lot of understanding and compassion! Right! I've got problems with me spilling, not me herring. She's got trouble with her punctuation, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. I sometimes put an exclamation mark at the end by mistake! <laughs> it's all right for you lot. I've got a very small vocabulary. What's that like? It's all right for you lot. I've got a very small vocabulary. <laughs> Sometimes I have trouble with my emphasis. Your emphasis? <laughs> yes, various different parts of the sentences. <laughs> In my job, that can cause quite a lot of awkwardness. What do you do? I'm a speech therapist. <laughs> a speech therapist who can't spike properly. <laughs> I'm surprised your boss hasn't sucked you. It's all right for you, lot. I've got a very small vocabulary. <laughs> can I make a suggestion? Why don't you purchase a dictionary? You'll save yourself a lot of embarrassment. I know. We could all try studying together, isn't it? How doesn't next week sound? Good idea! Perfect. <laughs> it's all right for you, Lord. Shut up! Isn't it? Raising money for people who are accident prone. Give your money here. Raising money for people who are accident prone. Give your money here. <laughs> What are you doing? Playing ping. <laughs> Patch will be greatly missed. He was a loving, loyal, and above all, obedient dog. Roll over. Yes, I am the bell ringer. I've come to meet you. I am... I know who you are. You are beautiful and I am ugly. I care not what you look like. Please turn round. No, I am a beast. You are not a beast. You're a man. A man with a soul. And through your eyes I shall see that soul. Then I shall judge your beauty. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you turn round again, please? Could one so beautiful learn to love someone so ugly? No. <laughs> I warned you I was ugly. Yeah, well, there's ugly and there's ugly, but that's just taking the piss. <laughs> yes, but what about the... Uh, yeah, not too close, please. Yeah, all right, you're not so great yourself, you know, love. <laughs> well, at least both my eyes look in the same direction. Yeah, uh, that's because my eyes are trying to avoid making contact with your face. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I don't spend most of my time cooped up in a bell tower, you freak. Yeah, well, I'm the, not the one that came up here looking for a fella I've never even met, you slag. <laughs> the bell! 